Hello everyone and welcome to the 20th tournament of Halo Ninja Warrior. For the fourth time on Halo 5, competitors from all around the world will attempt to defeat the treacherous four-stage obstacle course. The rules are simple, complete all four stages and you win $100, but fail a stage and your tournament is over. This is the second ever 100 competitor tournament and the last runner to go will be the 1000th ever attempt at this course. In the previous tournament, all 100 jumpers were defeated by the first three stages. DHG Fireball got the closest to defeating Stage 3, failing the Pipe Slider for the third time in his career, and Spartan Sasuke host RPG445 was the second closest, failing the Vertical Limit Kai. All-Stars Alpha Puma and Ump Double Ump failed the Cliffhanger, and Stage 3 first-timers Flame Vortex and Atlantic Champ got their first taste of success on this course. With this being such a historic tournament, each competitor will wear their respective number as it stands in the history of runs on this course, counting up from number 901 to number 1000. As a way to further reflect on the course's history, the final 20 competitors have been ranked by their longevity and overall performances on this course, looking as far back as Tournament 1. There is a record number of returning competitors back for Tournament 20, as well as lots of newcomers who are ready to begin their adventure on the first stage. Stage 1 has undergone numerous changes from the previous tournament, including the very first obstacle as the Cone Jump is back from Tournament 15. After that is the Rolling Escargo, which has dealt lots of damage throughout the years, and once again the TIE Fighter is back, followed by the Jump Hang Kai. After that we have our first new obstacle, the Crooked Wall, which requires competitors to pull off a tricky corner jump onto a pole before dismounting. After that is the infamous Warped Wall, and then another new obstacle, the Dragon Glider. Wrapping up Stage 1 is a modified version of the Balance Bridge, last seen in Tournament 8, and then the Lumberjack Climb. All obstacles must be completed within 90 seconds in order to move on to the second stage, and 100 competitors will attempt this first stage, and now we will find out who can advance. Let's get to the runs and begin Halo Ninja Warrior Tournament 20. Our first competitor of Tournament 20, number 901, just got shot in the head. It's Wolf Ninja 1225. He is a newcomer, and he's got Ninja in his gamer tag. Let's see how that helps him here on stage one. He is the first person to take on the cone jump since Tournament 15. And he's gotten through it. Now onto the Rolling Escargo, another obstacle making its return. We last saw it in Tournament 17. It did some good damage in that tournament, but now it is back for Tournament 20. This is one of those kind of a, kind of a historical obstacle. You know, it first came out back in Tournament 9. And now it's around for Tournament 20, and Wolf Ninja, with a really nice technique here, crouches all the way as it rolls down to the bottom, and now he is on to the TIE Fighter. This obstacle did a fair amount of damage in the last tournament, but let's see if he can get through it. He is a newcomer. This is not an easy obstacle for a newcomer, but he does it. And now he's onto the Jump Hang Kai, and he does that too. At least he gets into it and goes around the outside. This is a slightly slower technique, but he makes it work. And Wolf Ninja is the first person to ever attempt the Crooked Wall. He goes for it, and Wolf Ninja has defeated it. Now he is onto the Warped Wall. He's only got 30 seconds left, though. He took a lot of time on the Rolling Escargo, and he has failed to get up it on his first two attempts. He is not getting a big run-up either. Wolf Ninja looking like he's struggling on the Warped Wall down to under 20 seconds now. This is not looking good. It's actually a great run, seeing as he is the first runner of Tournament 20. However, he has a very bad technique here on the Warped Wall, not getting enough of a run-up. And he's just not getting the height he needs. He's getting really close but not close enough, and that is time for Wolf Ninja 1225. A very solid start to Tournament 20, and a great newcomer performance, but he will not be advancing to Stage 2. That brings us to our second competitor. We've got Tacit Toe? Ta Taste it? Tack it? Ta oh, Tack it Toe? I don't know. I, I really can't figure it out. And then a bunch of numbers, but anyway, he's onto the cone jump. And he gets onto the second one, going for the dismount. He clipped the cone, and it made him come up short. That's too bad. Good luck pronouncing his gamer tag. All right, number three, 903, that is Regional T Barn. Let's see what this guy can do. He's got a nice pointy helmet. That's always, uh, that, it never really helps, but it looks cool. 
All right, he gets onto the second one. Now he goes to the dismount. Did he come up short too? Oh my goodness, he slipped off. It looked like he had a chance to make it, but gravity was not helping him there. Now we've got Sands TCM number four in this tournament. Another newcomer. We haven't seen any returning competitors yet. He goes for the first jump and he comes up short. That is three straight cone jump failures. Well, uh, Wolf Ninja set the bar way too high for the first group of competitors, but now we have our first regular of the tournament. This is Volcanic Crowd 5. In the last tournament, he did fail the Jump Hang Kai, which is here in this tournament. Volcanic Crowd, he's been, uh, he's been around for a little while now. His seventh tournament right here. We love to see that. We love to see the regulars keep coming back for more, even though Volcanic has never beat stage one. He is still a fun competitor to watch, and uh, he did get by the Cone Jump, so that's a good start. Now he's onto the rolling escargo. He is standing on it, staying at the front. He jumps early, but he makes it. Volcanic crowd onto the TIE Fighter, the obstacle. He uh, he beat it in the last tournament. So let's see if he can do it here in tournament 20. He gets through it. Yes, look at that. Volcanic crowd, time for some revenge on the jump hang Kai. He jumps, he bounces, and no, he comes up short again. Two tournaments in a row out on the jump hang Kai. For a volcanic crowd. He went to the left side. He bounced. It looked like he got the bounce right, but I think he aimed too far to the left, which makes it an even further jump. And because of that, he came up short. Anyway, after that, we had Boston Strong. He was uh, strong enough to get past the cone jump, but touched the track on the rolling escargo and failed. And then a Yankee Matt 100 almost made it, but then he just ran off without jumping. Broza actually jumped, but had the worst jump you've ever seen and came up short on the rolling escargo. And then this guy, I'm a Mr. Penguin. Uh, yeah, he's a Mr. on the tracks now, which is illegal. He tried to jump back and died as, as he deserved. And then we had Shin Dude 3 at number 910. He slipped off and hit the track as well. So we are already seeing that the track is doing as much damage as anything else. He tried to keep do, uh, yeah, your run's over, Shin Dude. Hey, you, can't, you can't keep going. But that brings us to number 911. We've got HNW Superman right here. And while HNW Superman is his name, he has not been very super on this course. Last tournament, he went out on the TIE Fighter. Can he get back there? Let's see, Superman onto the cone jump, gets the second one, and makes it to the dismount. Looking good on that first obstacle, now they're rolling Escargo. Is that a Sentinel Beam he's got? If so, that's pretty cool, he should use it here. On the rolling escargo, now that'd be a horrible idea. He jumps really early and gets an amazing save jump. That was nicely done by Superman. And now he's onto the obstacle he failed in the last tournament. Can he get revenge? Oh, he's coming up so close on these. Wow. He just grinded his way through that obstacle and now he's onto the jump hang Kai. He jumps, he bounces, and he's into it. Look at this guy, Superman, putting up a really good run right now and he gets over the first ledge inside the jump hang Kai. Gets to the second one, now for the dismount. Oh, look at this guy, putting on a really solid run now for the Crooked Wall, but he comes up short. And we have our first Crooked Wall failure of Tournament 20, but still a very solid run from HNW Superman. And now we've got Mighty Max 80 back for his second appearance in the last tournament. He just whiffed on the first obstacle, came up short of the dismount, jumped incredibly early. Now he's got to try to figure out this first obstacle, the Cone Jump. He gets onto the second one. And it jumps to the dismount, looking pretty good. Rolling escargo time. This obstacle did a lot of damage early. Mighty Max, he's got that crouch technique. This is a very, uh, a very comfortable technique for a lot of competitors out there. You crouch, you stay at the front of the ball, and you just keep on walking to the left, and it works for him. He gets down to the bottom and jumps to the dismount. Now for the TIE Fighter. Mighty Max jumps into it. He's going to stay on one side of the TIE Fighter. No transitions back and forth, and it works for him. Now he's onto the Jump Hang Kai. He jumps, he bounces, and he lands inside. But he's going to walk around to the outside. Chew up a little bit of time, but play it safe. Now he's on to the Crooked Wall. Can he get it? He runs for it. He goes super high. Oh my goodness. He treated that thing like a warped wall. All right, he's going for it a second time. I can't believe he even saved that, but he comes up short this time. And Mighty Max, just like HNW Superman falls on the crooked wall. He almost made it up. Look at this. Wow. I can't believe he saved that. The fact that he got a second attempt is amazing, but his second attempt, unfortunately, came up short. He meleeed it on the way down as a sign of anger and frustration. 
disappointment. Hopefully he'll come back for Tournament 21 stronger. Talking King is up next. He is a regular, making his third appearance. And he is shooting the ground. A lot of people shoot the ground for their intro. In the last tournament, he got onto the butterfly wall, but could not get off. This tournament, there is no butterfly wall. So let's see what he does. Talking King. In the previous tournament, uh, oh, well, two tournaments ago, tournament 18, he did fail the first obstacle of stage one. So he showed a little bit of progress. And uh, he's continuing to show some signs of life here as he got past the first obstacle. Now he is taking the slow way on the rolling escargo. Not too bad. Wow. He, okay, he's going really slow here. He is r making sure he stays to the front. Oh, okay, but he jumps off early. I'll give him that. That's fine. If you're going to take the slow technique, it's cool because you, you dismount early. That was good by Talking King. Now he's going through the TIE Fighter. Look at this guy. Who? What? What Talking King did we see in the last two tournaments? This guy is moving right now. He's into the jump hang high even. All right. I like what I'm seeing right now. He gets through it. And Talking King is onto the crooked wall. You can tell he's practiced a lot more for this tournament. He goes for it. And Talking King gets the crooked wall. Now can he be the first competitor to get up the warped wall this tournament? Oh, not on his first attempt. It was close. His feet slipped off. But this time he gets up it, and he's still got 30 seconds left. The first competitor to take on the Dragon Glider, a brand new obstacle. He gets into the head slide, goes for the jump, and no, Talking King comes up short of the second head slide. And he has some company in the water now. That was a magnificent run from Talking King, but here on the Dragon Glider, he crouched right there to get out of the bar. He lost all of his momentum. When you lose your momentum, you don't get the distance you need. But that was still a solid run from Talking King. And then right after that, we had Digitized Havoc, who got a little closer, but couldn't make the dismount on the Dragon Glider. It's a really tough obstacle. Nuke Dukem got his name backwards and fell the Rolling Escargo. He uh, jumped out of the water, though. That was cool. Mixtape 469 went out on the TIE Fighter. As did WPX Copy and Pust. It's supposed to be paste, but you know what I mean. FOPG Lone Wolf didn't know which way to go on the Jump Hang Kai. Number 918 right there, and then number 919, Thy Noodleness is up next. He is a newcomer. You're taking on stage one. This guy actually makes some really cool jump maps and uh, other custom games on Halo 5. So I highly recommend that you check him out. Uh, search his gamertag, add him whatever you got to do to uh, find his maps. But let's see how he does here on stage one. Look at this on the rolling escargo. Standing up, taking it like a man, and he gets through it. All right, and now he's on to the TIE Fighter. Newcomers tend to struggle with obstacles like these, but we've seen some pretty decent performances and a really nice run through the TIE Fighter right there from Noodleness, and he bounces up into the Jump Hang Kai. He is looking really good, just like uh, Wolf Ninja did at number one. But this is number 19. Can he get past the Crooked Wall? He lines up for it. He sprints, he jumps, and he absolutely crushes it. That was a great attempt right there from Noodleness, and okay, he's gonna go for the Spring Jump technique on the Warped Wall, but it did not work. Can he get it this time? Oh, okay, he spring jumps up it. A new technique right there. Some people can pull it off, not bad. Thy Noodleness now under the Dragon Glider. We saw two people fail it so far. Out of the two that have attempted it, can Noodleness do it? He's going through it. Can he dismount? Yes, he can. Thy Noodleness is on to the Balance Bridge. Jumping right through it, the third pallet, and he's on to the Lumberjack Climb. He's still got plenty of time left. Is Thy Noodleness going to be the first clear? No, he comes up short. Can he save it? He can't. And Thy Noodleness is out on stage one. Why does it have to be this way? Look at this. He came up short of the last jump of stage one. Oh my goodness. That is so hard to watch. We would have had our first newcomer clear stage one since tournament 18. But Thy Noodleness comes up one jump short. Jesus Life is up next at number 920. I'm sorry guys, this is gonna take me a while to get over that failure. All right, Cheese, can you make me forget it? I don't know, Cheese is life five onto the cone jump. All right, he goes through it fast. That's a good uh, that's a good way to make me forget that last run. All right, what's he gonna do? He's gonna crouch on the rolling escargo here. All right, taking it slow. I got no problem with that. Let's see if he dismounts early though, like Talking King did. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, Cheese, that was really early, wow. What a save jump there from Cheese's life. Now he's on to the TIE Fighter. Gonna jump back and forth. Keep it going. All right, nicely done. Now he's on to the Jump Hang Kai. He jumps, he bounces, he's into it. What's he gonna do? He's gonna jump over there for no reason, but why not? 
Whatever makes you feel good, Cheese. All right, Cheese is through the jump hang Kai. Can he get the crooked wall? He goes for it. And no, Cheese's life comes up short. Another crooked wall failure. 20 runs in. We still have yet to see anyone clear stage one. Thy noodleness. Why didn't you do it? Why didn't you make that last jump? Whatever. It's Crown Ferret's turn now. Crown Ferret 19. This is actually Irish 1200. It's his first time on the course. How's he going to do? And now he's onto oh, the rolling ball. And he's taking his time and he's missed it. He's missed it. That's going to have to mean disqualification. So that was actually a clip of him competing on Ninja Warrior of Halo Tournament 3. He's been around for a very long time, but this is his first time on Halo Ninja Warrior. I don't know why it took him so long to compete, but he is moving through the cone jump and he does get through it. Now for the rolling escargo. We just saw as he failed on his first ever Ninja Warrior of Halo appearance on that rolling ball. Let's see if he can do this rolling ball. He's actually looking really good right now. He's rolling fast at the end. He dismounts and he makes it. Ground Ferret, Irish 1200, whatever you want to call him. He is on to the TIE Fighter and he's going to crouch jump into it. Interesting technique there. He doesn't get a second jump. And he slips off the window. Crown Ferret out on the TIE Fighter. Either way, thanks for competing on Halo Ninja Warrior finally. Now we've got Serious Gamer 117 making his third appearance. He was not very serious about the last tournament. He came up short of only the second step. Now it's time to see if he can make some improvements. It's only two jumps right here on the first obstacle. Just those two, those two cones, those two balls. There's not as many as there were steps in the last tournament. He does get through it. Now he's on to the rolling escargo. We've seen a lot of people so far take this one nice and slow, which is fine. I mean, the time limit on the stage is not the most generous, but it's also fair. He jumps and he doesn't get any momentum moving towards the dismount. And that's how you come up short, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta be careful with that. Anyway, next up, we've got the Sloth Baus. This guy is making his second appearance. His newcomer performance was uh, a little lackluster. He went out on the butterfly wall. But there are some shocking butterfly wall failures in the last room. I mean, you got Bradley Freakin', you got Exposed. But the Sloth Boss just destroyed the cone jump. That was awesome. And now he's on to the rolling escargo. He's standing on it like a true Bouse. That's what the bosses do. They stand on it and he dismounts beautifully. All right, now he's running on over into the TIE Fighter. Got to get these back and forth jumps. He's doing very nicely right now. The Sloth Bouse looking really good. All right, he goes for the jump hang Kai. Can he get this? He jumps, he bounces, he's into it, and he gets up to the first ledge, jumps to the next ledge, and he is on to the crooked wall. Look at the Sloth Bouse. Bouse. Oh, no. He had such a nice run going, but that crooked wall takes him out. Well, either way, massive improvement over his Tournament 19 newcomer performance. And another guy back for his second appearance is Arc 407. He was Fire Arc before, and he just vanished in the last tournament. I didn't even see him fail. He fell behind uh, behind the dismount platform in regards to the camera angle, so it kind of confused me. But now he's back. Let's see if he can go in the middle this time. Let's see. Come on, do it. There you go. Oh, he's almost to the right of it. But now Arc is onto the rolling escargo. He is standing on top of it. He's got the shotgun. I always worry that someone's going to shoot it and it's going to go flying. All right, he dismounts and he gets it. Time for the TIE Fighter. Shooting this obstacle will do nothing. So he's going to jump back and forth. He gets across and makes the big leap for the dismount. Now it's time for the jump hang He sprints, he jumps, he bounces, and he doesn't get outside far enough. He was still a little bit inside in relation to that ledge. And he failed it. Well, after 24 failures on stage one, no one has cleared. Let's hope our next jumper is ready. Making his seventh consecutive appearance is the regular Avows the Samurai. Avows made his first appearance back in Tournament 14, and while he hasn't missed the tournament since, he also has yet to complete stage one. On his newcomer performance, he only managed to defeat the first obstacle as he went swimming on the X-Bridge. He made huge improvements going into Tournament 15, but couldn't get up the warped wall before the clock hit zero. And surprisingly, he had the exact same result in Tournament 16. His Halo 5 career got off to a rocky start as he went out on the rolling escargo, but in Tournament 18, he put up his personal best performance, beating the warped wall and going out on the flying chute. He couldn't make it back there in the last tournament as he failed the bridge jump but now, after six first stage failures, we'll see if Avows can use his experience to finally prevail on stage one. 
So for a guy who's had some very back and forth runs on stage one, we want to see him do well. We want to see him reach that buzzer. Let's see if tournament 20 will be the time he can do it. His first test, the cone jump, a pretty simple obstacle. Aside from like the first group of competitors, no one has really struggled with that one. And now he's onto the rolling escargo. He just failed this recently in tournament 17, three tournaments ago. Not that long ago, if you really think about it. And he is looking much better today. All right, he's going to jump to the right side, and it looks like he's going to stick on the right side. He gets all those jumps, makes it to the landing, and now for the jump hang Kai, he beat this in both of the last two tournaments, and he's into it this time, going around the outside. And yes, he's looking good. He's usually really good at that obstacle, actually. Now for the crooked wall. Oh, okay, he takes a false attempt right there. He's going to back up and try it again. He runs, he jumps, he goes for it, and he almost did it too well. I thought he nailed it. What just happened to Avows the Samurai? I thought he hit the log right there. Let's see. He sprints. He jumps. And wow, I guess he just didn't get a jump. It looked like he landed on it and had an opportunity to jump, but he didn't make it. Oh, you serious? He oh. had that. Oh, that was close. so close. His heels, like, brushed it. That is very, very unfortunate for Avows the Samurai. But that crooked wall is really tough. Nine people have tried it. Only four of them have gotten by. And none of those four were able to clear. Next up, we've got another newcomer, Armand Manarma. That's right, 90 seconds on stage one. Let's see how he does. All right, he is on the first of the cone jumps. He's going to jump onto the cone. All right. Nope, and he's back down. No, okay. Let's, yep. Oh, goodness. What's he doing? Come on. All right, he's wasting a lot of time here. He jumps to the next cone, and then he just walks off. Oh, goodness. All right, obviously no one taught him how to do that obstacle, but it's all right. Anyway, right after that, we had Paps Master, who just... Ugh, I'm not even going to talk about that. Charlie and Owen was up next. He went out inside the Jump Hank High. You always hate to see that. Much Doge Lord touched the track on the Rolling Escargo, something we've seen a lot of competitors do. NKCA 2018 slipped off the ball at the very end of the track. Textural Skate slipped off the front in the middle of the track. Plump Aphid slipped off the back at the end of the track. Are, are you are you keeping track of this? And then uh, NLD Demon Drifter just jumped on the track. People are they're jumping all over that thing. Elias Lindholm, he uh, was going pretty nicely on the TIE Fighter until he got too far back. And then Nightmare God continued the trend of touching the track on the uh, Rolling Escargo. At least he fell in the water afterwards. That always makes it a little bit better. But 31 people have attempted that obstacle. 14 of them have failed. That's a lot of failures on one obstacle. Anyway, let's see how our next newcomer does. This is Fuse Light. Fuse Light. That sounds like it could be a drink. All right. He's got the needler. He's rolling through the cone jump. If anyone takes that idea, if you create a brand called Fuse Light, I'm going to be very upset. Well, he had to reset that, and that's going to cost him a little bit of time, but he gets back on it, and he is rolling. He's staying a little far back on the ball. It's going to pick up speed if he's not careful. Wow. Fuse Light. Handles it like a pro. That was nicely done. And now he is on to the TIE Fighter. All right. He jumps into it on the left side. He's going to go back and forth. He gets too far forward and was unable to get a jump on the other window. That's too bad for Fuse. Good luck with the drink, though. Oh, goodness. I forgot this guy was competing. All right. <sighs> 97 Grizzlies. This guy uh, timed out in the warp door on the last tournament. Yeah. I don't think he got shot to death. He, got, he did get shot to death in tournament 17. That was a... Uh, that was really satisfying. All right, Ninty. He's actually been competing pretty well for the last few tournaments. Um, he hasn't beat stage one yet, though. Let's see if he could do that in tournament 20. That would be something to see. Well, he is rolling very fast on the rolling escargo, but he pulls it off. And now he's on to the TIE Fighter. He did this in the last tournament. He's going to jump back and forth. Ninty doesn't get a jump off the second window. And Ninty's Tournament 20 ends a little earlier than we may have expected. I can surprisingly say that. Oh, this game, this is the best gamer tag. Itchy Crevice, he's back for a second tournament. He was in the last tournament, and he was another one of those butterfly wall victims. Now at number 38, there's a lot of competitors in this tournament who are competing for their second time, and I like seeing that. All right, Itchy Crevice, he's off. Wow, look at those moves. All right, he looked really good on the cone jump. Let's see if he can improve over his second obstacle failure in the last tournament by beating this very tough rolling escargo he looks really comfortable on it he's facing forward he is not facing the wall i like uh like seeing different people using different techniques there now for the tie fighter ninty just failed this 
It really is an obstacle anyone can fail at any moment, but Itchy Crevice. Oh, he gets really low on the dismount, but he makes it work. And now for the Jump Pain Kai, he bounces, and Itchy Crevice is into it. Look at this dude. He is making huge improvements. We've seen a couple competitors make big improvements over the last tournament. He seems to be struggling to get through this, though. All right, he finally works out all the crouch jumps, and with 45 seconds left, he's onto the crooked wall. Can he pull this off? He goes for it, and Itchy Crevice gets the crooked wall. What a run from this guy. Onto the warped wall now. Can he get up into one? I think he would have had it there if he crouched. That was a mistake by him. 30 seconds now. Oh, you really want to get up it with more than 30 seconds left. He's going to be itching for time if he's itching anything, honestly. Oh, wow, okay. 20 seconds now under the warp wall. Itchy Crevice goes for it again. He still can't get it. And he's crouching all over the warp wall. That's not going to help him at all. All right, Itchy Kravis. Oh, God, don't fall off the back. All right, he's down to just six seconds left. It's not going to be enough time, unfortunately. Itchy Kravis, he's mailing the wall. He knows his run is over, and Itchy Kravis does time out on the warp wall. However, after failing the butterfly wall in the last tournament, that is a huge improvement again. And I love seeing competitors come back for their second time and make those improvements. We'll see what he has in store for the future. Hopefully, he'll be back for Tournament 21. But his Tournament 20 run it does end on the warped wall. And just like that, 38 competitors have failed this first stage. But our next jumper is the first person competing in this tournament who has defeated Stage 1 in the past. Making only his fourth appearance on this course is the longtime Halo jumper, Soul Reaper 1025. Soul has an incredibly spread out list of tournaments that he's appeared in, including the first ever tournament where he failed the final obstacle of Stage 1. He didn't return until Tournament 7, where he made it to the medal spin on Stage 2, and then went on an even longer hiatus, not competing again until Tournament 16. After competing only three times in a 16 tournament span, he decided, why not take another break and miss the first three Halo 5 tournaments? Finally, he is back again, and the man who made his debut in Tournament 1 has made it back for the landmark 20th tournament. Soul Reaper is only one of like four competitors who's in this tournament who is also in Tournament 1, but he has only four appearances. This is going to be awesome to watch him run, and he moves through the cone jump, no problems. Now for the rolling escargo. He's going to stand up on it. All right, Soul. He's looking pretty good right now. He's going fast, and he jumps off a little early and nails the dismount. Now for the TIE Fighter. He's jumping back and forth. Can he defeat this? Yes, he can. Now time for some revenge. This is where he failed in Tournament 16. He bounces, and he lands inside of it. There we go. Soul making some improvements, and he's hopping over them. Oh, no, Soul! He jumps out, and he has no chance to save it. Soul Reaper, and I don't know who that was that just fell in the water, but Soul actually landed inside the Jump Hang Kai this time. But look at this. He jumps over the first one nicely, but the second time he jumps, he stands too close to the wall, and it pushes him out. You gotta get some separation between you and the wall before you jump onto that ledge. Soul did not do that, and his Tournament 20 run is over, but it was still great to see him compete after missing every tournament since Tournament 16, and that brings us to number 40 of Tournament 20. Competing in his seventh tournament is Strafe Helix, previously known as Vulcan 1610. Strafe's first Halo Ninja Warrior run came in Tournament 10, and he participated in all of the final three Xbox 360 tournaments. He even managed to clear Stage 1 in Tournament 12, but went out on the swing ladder of Stage 2. He missed all of the MCC tournaments, but made his return on Halo 5, where it took him two more first stage failures to get back into his rhythm. In the last tournament, he completed stage one for the second time in his career and went for a risky technique on the balance tank that ultimately backfired. Now we will see if the new veteran can keep his momentum from the last tournament and defeat this stage for his third time. Well, we are already way past the longest streak of stage one failures that this course has seen. 39 people have failed it. Can Strafe be the one to break that streak? He looks really comfortable on the cone jump and now he's onto the rolling escargo. It looks like a, he kind of got it moving as he jumped up to it. 
interesting way to stand it on the back of the ball, but Strafe makes it work, and now he is on to the TIE Fighter. Strafe going and changing his gamer tag right after he makes himself very well known, beating stage one in 19, but now we gotta call him something different. So Vulcan, no more. Strafe Felix is here, and he's into the jump hang Kai. He goes around the outside, wants to play it safe. Takes a little more time, but not actually too much. Now for the crooked wall, can he do this? Strafe! Nails the crooked wall. What a run right there. Now for the warped wall. Can he get up it in one? And no. We have seen a lot of people struggle on this warped wall already, and he fails it on a second attempt. But luckily, Strafe had a really good pace up until this point. He is up the warped wall on his third attempt. And now for the dragon glider. He sprints. He jumps. Bounces. A little bit of lag right there, but he's into the first glider and jumps to the second one. Stray Felix is through. Now on to the balance bridge. He skips to the second pallet, still lagging a little bit. And he's on to the lumberjack climb. We saw Thy Noodleness get here and fail. Can Strafe do it? Oh no, he slips. Oh, but Strafe is able to save it. That was huge. He still got so much time. And Strafe Helix is going back to stage two for the second tournament in a row. What a run from Strafe. Ten and a half seconds left. Look at this. First off, that's a tough obstacle, the Crooked Wall. It's a new one, but he handles it with ease. He slipped up a little bit on the Warped Wall, and it did cost him some time. But eventually, he scaled it and then made an incredible save on the Lumberjack Climb, something Thy Noodleness could not do. But Strafe did it, and he climbed all the way to the top. There you Fun. go. Second time, baby, let's go. And for the third time in his career, Vulcan, now known as Stray Felix, will be moving on to stage two. And he is the first person advancing today, and he's number 40. Well done, Stray Felix. After the longest streak of stage one failures in the course's history, Stray Felix has kept hope alive for all of our remaining competitors who await their attempt at stage one. While the rolling escargo dealt the majority of the damage, we've also seen a wide variety of failures throughout the stage from both regulars and newcomers alike. Even though only one of the first 40 competitors could reach stage 2, the skill level of our jumpers will continue to go up as we get deeper into this tournament. In the next episode, we'll see many of the new rising stars take their shot at Tournament 20 and find out who can join Stray Helix on the second stage. If you ever want to compete in a tournament, make sure to message Smokey Massacre on Xbox Live, and also don't forget to check out our Facebook page. Thanks everyone for watching, make sure to like and leave a comment, and I will see you next time on Halo Ninja Warrior!